Despite the epidemic of senioritis, suffered by some of us for the last quarter, or the last two quarters, or the last three quarters, or the last four years, <laughs> guys, we made it. You made it, I made it, we made it. <laughs> made it here? To the Neil S. Blaisdell Center? Yeah, graduating is a big deal. But as we walk tonight on the brink of the future, while making it here is an accomplishment, the road ahead seems endless in comparison to the few steps we've come. Class of 2018, we have not crossed the finish line. We've only arrived at the start. Wow, that's depressing. <laughs> but it's called commencement for a reason. We've been expected to graduate for the majority of our lives. We've completed our requirements, paid complete attention and guidance, diligently abided by all free dress guidelines, and reported our exercise habits with total honesty, always expecting to graduate, always being expected to graduate. Throughout our high school careers, we've been bombarded by expectations. Expectations to make healthy decisions, so avoid making yourself Simon for lunch every single day. Expectations about sportsmanship, so limit your song contest celebrations to high-fiving. <laughs> Expectations over a century old, so be good and industrious men and women. We've had countless people impress their expectations upon us, and at times that's been annoying, overwhelming, and downright burdensome. But there is great power in expectations, at least in the ones we set for ourselves. Because expectations are based on what we know we can accomplish. Unconsciously, we create personal expectations that reflect our perceived ability. Take tonight, for example. We've expected to graduate because we know we can. That expectation, in turn, incentivizes appropriate action, like carrying out graduation requirements. Similarly, when we believe ourselves to be capable of achieving more, we adjust our expectations and aspirations accordingly. Like our homegrown hacker, Nick Wong. <laughs> Nick expects himself to become something along the lines of a native Hawaiian Elon Musk. If not, he might settle for running a multi-billion dollar tech company. Eh. Or a color guardian slash superhuman Emily Stone. She annihilates AP calculus quizzes by day and gracefully twirls flags by night. Emily expects to specialize as a surgeon. Or the admirable J.D. Sheehy, versatile enough to transition from killing a dance routine to cruising at the top of the curve in AP Physics C. Jade expects to become a top-notch civil engineer. And knowing Nick and Emily and Jade, these are totally realistic expectations. Totally realistic and notably rare. In fact, few of us have such lofty expectations. And that might be problematic. Our expectations often function as stepping stones, building us toward increasing accolades. So by setting low expectations, we risk shortchanging ourselves and jeopardizing our goals in the long run. Here's another example. Pretend you're Maloa Akina and your goal is to become a finance analyst. Yeah. It'd be pretty impossible for my ambitious debate partner to do so if he didn't expect himself to major in finance or economics. Maloa intends to double major in both. It'd also be difficult if he didn't expect himself to have effective communication skills. Considering Mao took first in the state in his debate category, I think he has it covered. And I think that you guys get the point. Personal expectations are crucial to personal progress. So why don't more of us expect more? Obviously, setting high expectations doesn't guarantee success, but not setting high expectations might be setting up for failure. The key lies in something I said earlier. Personal expectations reflect our perceived ability, our belief in what we can do. Nick, Emily, Jade, and Mao have something significant in common. They're not just individuals of high ability. They have the courage to recognize and take advantage of that ability. Wow, again, depressing. 
I mean, if it boils down to ability, there's no point in competing against those with more talent, right? Absolutely wrong. Ability is not just about talent. I'm here as your valedictorian, but I'm not the smartest among us. In every subject area, I can easily identify someone from our class who's naturally smarter. Calculus, Emmy Alvo. Chemistry, Keola Ching. English, Sarah Sonomora. Psychology, Brock Barr. Physics, Jessica Lee. Science research, Tojo Abella. History, Keani Lagasa. Music tech, Keala Lyons. Economics, Cameron Laborte. I'm no genius, just ask my friends, but I know how to work really hard. And that's something each one of us can do. We've only arrived at the start. Not so depressing anymore, huh? Because sure, some of us are already faster, more talented, yeah. But hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You have the power to improve your abilities, to elevate your expectations, to run this race better than spectators thought you could. And spectators, they express their own set of expectations. But once we become comfortable with our abilities, external expectations begin to lose relevance. In 10th grade, Ty Williams told me something I will probably never forget. In the middle of AP World History one day, as we were comparing schedules for a junior year, Ty remarked, you'll never be number one. Well, unsurprisingly, Ty was wrong about something. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Ty's a great guy, and he outscored me on that AP World exam anyway. The point is, I was apparently pretty upset by this comment. And in hindsight, I was upset because, well, a part of me believed him. It bothered me until I believed, not in Ty's opinion, but in my own ability. When we are secure in our expectations and work ethic, we can find the confidence to confront the you can'ts and you'll nevers with, no, I can. And because I can, I will. We pursue our expectations in spite of opposition with the support of those around us. I want to take a moment to thank some of those who have supported me. To Ms. Ish, Mr. Fuchs, Dr. Kuba, Mrs. Razi, Kumumomi, Mr. Hutchison, Slagle, Sava, and Kalka. Each of you has inspired me with your immense knowledge and taught me invaluable lessons that extend past academics. I would not be here today without all of you. To Mr. O, Mr. Mo, and Empty Catherine, from Calvin Coolidge and Smooth Jazz to CNN Facts First, and Greg Taffy to College Essay Editing and Will Smith, you three are like family to me. To Mrs. Regua, you are the best VP ever. You're a massive part of the reason we are incredible. Literally, because you're the mastermind behind the incredible Red 18 thing. Super cool. <laughs> to my family and friends, thank you for being my most steadfast supporters and my source of sanity. To those who flew down for this occasion, I've missed you so much. Your presence during this pivotal time in my life means more than I could ever articulate. To mom and dad, I don't know how you do it. Thank you for tolerating my all-nighters, teaching me the value of self-advocacy, and loving me unconditionally. I hope to repay you by providing the funds for an early retirement opportunity. <laughs> to the lane, thank you for inspiring my college essay and catalyzing the competitive nature that has become, for better or worse, a massive part of my personality. Sometimes you boys were the absolute worst, but most times you remain the absolute best. I legitimately love you guys, just some of you more than others. And most importantly, I give all glory to God. I could accomplish nothing apart from Christ and his saving work on the cross. To all the supporters in my life, thank you. As we run this race, we will have spectators, including our supporters, external voices with their own expectations. Sometimes these can conflict with our own or distract us. 
This condition was modeled for us quite recently, actually, by the legendary Elia Akako. It's no secret that nearly every student across every grade expected Elia to forepeat as the winner of the Director's Award. And by nearly every student, I mean the students intelligent enough to understand the definition of the word sweep. We had every reason to. Elia is truly gifted and fully committed to our co-ed every year. But the results did not go as expected. In fact, if you rewatch a clip of the award being announced, you can see how ridiculously surprised we look. Our mortified faces said it all. Interesting, though, that out of all the seniors present that night, to me, Elia seemed the least upset. Despite external expectations, Elia espoused a different perspective. He had the ability to win the award. He'd already done it three times. But he fixed his sights on a loftier goal. The personal award was not what mattered. Our co-ed did. So instead of being upset, as I was at Ty's comment, Elia won that night in March because his goal was so much bigger and better than what spectators wanted. Don't let external expectations stymie your success. And don't let expectations, internal or external, muddy your decision making. In our world today, there are a lot of prejudices circulating because of expectations. Staunch partisanship and deep divides between people groups are caused by expectations, senseless sentiments against the other side. And society is suffering because of it. In his inaugural address, President Donald Trump said, we must speak our minds openly, debate our minds honestly, but always pursue solidarity. When we are united, we are totally unstoppable. In order to overcome narrow, uninformed expectations about one another, we desperately need dialogue, discuss, debate, and ultimately understand. Unity is not achieved through consensus. It is achieved through understanding. So understand. Stand. Sitting is not the solution. Passive protest is ineffective when action is necessary. But there is great power in expectations. And power goes both ways. So use it for good. Elevate your expectations. Remember, we place expectations like stepping stones to build toward greater goals. So build boldly. Live boldly. When someone says you cannot, ask why not. And when expectations are tainted by prejudice or ignorance, pursue understanding. Believe in your abilities, risk failure, and expect to run this race well. Expect to be totally unstoppable. Expect to be incredible.